In this video, we're going to be making two different kinds of rings. This is one, this is the um, pattern wire wrap ring. And then this wrap wrapped ring is made using roller printed wire and it's uh, a little more organic than this one is. They're fun and relatively easy to make. So I think we should get started. For the first ring we're going to make, um, you'll need, I'm going to be using a 14 gauge square wire. You can use rectangular wire, you could use round, but make sure that it's thick enough uh, that you aren't going to have tin foil when you're done here, because this is going through the rolling mill twice to flatten and once with a pattern plate to pattern it. Uh, it can be relatively thin because what this does is because it's layered one piece over another it creates added uh, thickness and is much stronger than if you just use this 14 gauge so the first thing we need to do for this ring is grab some uh, 14 gauge square wire or 12 gauge square wire and we're going to roller print this so it's going to stretch so I'm going to cut this at 10 uh, centimeters. If you weren't going to be patterning, it would be whatever your measurement was from doing this. Grab a ring mandrel and a length of copper wire. This is 20 gauge. And whatever size you want, you wrap. If you wanted to do two wraps, it would be this long. If you wanted to do three wraps, it would be this long. So there's my cut mark, approximately. I like to keep both ends in the same area. So it's up to you how you handle that. It doesn't have to be that way. And then straighten it out and give it a quick measure. 15, 17. So 17 uh, centimeters would be a good length to cut for if you had already patterned wire. Right now we don't, so we're going to go ahead and clip this off and bring this over to the rolling mill. And actually while you're at it, cut two pieces because this is a double uh, and the, we're at the rolling mill we're going to roll with two different patterns just to keep things interesting. Here we are at ye old rolling mill and briefly I'm going to show you how to roll this put it in between the rollers and tighten down. And then I look up here and read what number it's at. And there's actually a little mark there. So I'm going to unroll this, put it back to that mark and bring it over two or three lines and then run it through. And then I'm going to tighten it down, maybe what, five lines. I wanted to mention that I got to see and meet Kevin Potter and see his shop uh, this February when I was at the Tucson Gem Show and he kindly gave me these two beautiful plates. Awesome host, amazing shop, his preservation of the machinery and the dyes and all the stuff he's got in there is just incredible. I, I was blown away, I had a great time, I went with Chris um, from Vine Punch Forge, and the three of us just talk shop a lot. It was fabulous. <laughs> I have to post uh, the images I took there because they're it's an amazing place. He's also a very nice human being. Anyway, back to this. He taught me that these steel plates can actually go in the mill, and I was a little hesitant at first, but after I did my first one, I realized, oh, he's right. It's not causing any problems, so I'm going to not make a sandwich of this. So back in here again, tighten down, find your mark. So um, I would do the second one in a different pattern just to make it more interesting. You'll want it to look something like that, about that wide. 
then we're going to run it through with a pattern plate and as you can see this is longer than the plate so i'll show you what i do to adjust that so start like we did initially with the wire by opening the mill up putting the wire in wrong way <laughs> tighten down all right so i'm going to start rolling now this is still this is stretching as as i roll so right about here I'm going to come in and mark just a little above the edge of the plate. And hopefully that's going to give me the right spot to place this for its second run through. But this time, I'm only putting this part on here. And I'm going to pull out. This is perfect, but it's not bad. I just have a little gap there. So this has gotten much longer and it's sufficient for our wrap. So do that with another pattern. A note on patterns. You'll want tight, compact patterns. And obviously, obvious stripe would not work with this or something larger. You're just not going to get the detail that you want. So once you get your wire back from the mill, you want to give it a, just an eyeball on length for future reference because if you, this one you make isn't long enough, you can always make that the original square wire at a 12 or 14 or whatever. Um, so this nets out to about 14 centimeters. It's not a big deal as long as you have enough to give it a good wrap. Now, if I put these end to end together, you can tell that this side is really kind of wonked out. So I'm going to grab a mallet, lay this on something flat, and give it a whack. We don't care about all the wonks, just don't want it too crazy off. It's very curvy, so I'm going to bend it with my hand. Okay, that looks better. And then I'm going to trim this so that they're the same size. All right. So we have our two pieces. So now we need to go over and do something with fire. All right, you can hear my oxygen concentrator and ventilation all going, so it's a little loud in here. Uh, I've got my wires here. I need cross locks so that I can hold these while I ball up the end. Turn off my oxygen, turn on my gas, turn this in the right direction. Hold these in this position. Notice the blue part of my flame is below the tip. If you could see it, it would help. Uh, just a little quick melt over like that. So that's that part. That was easy. While I was waiting for these in the pickle, I decided to do an experiment and what I did was I soldered one end together and it's because I had them cross otherwise they're really symmetrical so I had I crossed them and it's just too wacky for me I'm, I'm not happy with the look of that at all so I'm going to keep these unsoldered together and it's a little more difficult to manipulate them but frankly I think it's worth it. So you want to twist these and move them around. It's supposed to be free form, cross over, wherever, however you want to do it. Looks goofy now, huh? Don't worry, we're going to be messing with this for a little while. You get, they're different every single time, <laughs> which is kind of cool. This is getting harder and harder to push. Time to anneal again. See how my hand, left hand, is twirling. It's twirling the metal around. And, and I'm probably going to have to anneal this one more time. Will that fit any of my fingers? Yes, my pinky. So I'm going to do this one too. Hammering, turning, 
walking around and you can do it with your hands too. Let's see, about the same size. That's about seven and a half. Ooh, it's a little too big. It's good on that side, it's not on this side. So it means this needs to get tighter, the bottom one. You can try to put these guys together. Like that. You want to check your size again. Check it on the other side. Okay, so now what we can do is start looking for places where we can solder this. There's a spot right there. There's a spot right here. We want to get those ends secured down here. All the ends except this one look good. Okay, now that's better. You want everything touching, even if it's just a hair. So I'm going to go probably do two of the ends. There's the other two on the other side. Gosh, this stuff moves and you're like, ah, no, I got a solder there. Don't do that. So we're all flexed up, warming up the flux. I think I'm going to drop three pieces of solder, uh, three or four. Alright, that's going to go right here. So I'll put another one here. Alright, going in for the kill. That flowed. Okay, so we've got a couple of good spots there that are covered, uh, and that should be okay. And then I'm gonna maybe change the shape of some of these things back here a little bit now that it's hooked together. I don't know, it's a big decision. So I just had this idea. I thought, well, instead of doing two, what if we just did one? So I'm going to try that. You never know. It could work. Cross here. Turn it around. And across again. Press on this side. And then of course, it was always a weird thing like that. Yeah. Need to anneal it again. Tight, hard. Oh my gosh, it's just when it's hardened, it's crazy, but this could work. So, this will be my third time in soldering, and I've clamped these down. I'm going to put solder in this area and in here. And then next round, I'll probably squish this in. Uh, yeah. So you just kind of keep working until you say, oh, that's done. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty high on the creative spectrum as far as there's no set way, right way to wrap it. Like I showed earlier, you might want to try this one. I'm still working on the long one uh, because it's one less wire to work with. I'll uh, have picture at the end of the video on how this turned out but I think it's time to move on to our second event which is this ring all right that was fun next All right, we are on to the simpler wrapped ring. I, I want you to notice though the difference in height on these. Uh, it can be substantial as far as wearability is concerned. This is a very wide ring and can, if you're this, the distance between these joints is not great, this won't be comfortable for you. This one is more comfortable because it's shorter, depends on your hand size, who you're making it for, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, you want to choose, this is my recommendation, you can do whatever you want. I am not your mother, <laughs> but 
these are all five millimeters and less width wise so this is four and these two are fives i don't think I'll, i personally would not go larger than five millimeters as far as how much lengthwise it depends if you're going to do a double or single wrap so for this one i'm going to do that double and somewhere around here about eight and a half i mentally kind of adding on extra for the thickness of the metal because we're not in the same gauge here this is 20 and i have no idea what they are anyway i am positive this is 13 because i've already measured it 13 ish no it, <laughs> it's 14. <laughs> god it's so hard being imperfect um anyway 14 would probably be a good length 15 maybe if you're going to ball up the ends I've decided to not ball up the ends. I'm just going to finish these and I'm going to show you that. Uh, although I do kind of like the look of the balled up ends. We'll see if I am happy at the end of this process. Uh, so I'm going to do that now. The balling of the ends. It sounds so regal like. The balling of the ends announced the queen. <laughs> Been in my studio by myself for too long. All right, I'm just gonna start with a file. This is a Havilis file, which is bigger than a needle. Let's see if I can find any place that's comfortable while you can still see my fancy sweet drawer here. I'm just rounding these edges off. And because there's thickness to this too, you wanna round that up a bit make a gradual slope okay that's good enough for shaping there and then i'm going to use the rough silicone polishing wheel which is not going to be polishing it's going to be grinding taking off any burrs and if you want while you're here you can kind of bevel this interior ow that hurt my brain uh, bevel the interior edge a little bit so it's more like a comfort fit ring I'm gonna go ahead and do this whole part and we're gonna switch to our next wheel I'm not gonna do this end now because I want to show you this without boring you to tears or switching the channel which is worse okay now we're on the, me the medium and i'm going to of course go all the way down the edge that i just ground up a little bit with that bevel and use this this wheel on that and then medium it's not absolutely perfect yet i'm going to work on it when you're not looking I get so shy <laughs> anyway I'm gonna do that with the other end and like I said this is my first time not balling up the end so we'll see if Nancy likes it or not so you're gonna start this like you normally would a ring except you're not gonna curl the back end of it just one side and you want to place it slightly above the size that you want it at actually probably a couple sizes larger at this point, I'm going to start woman handling it and moving it around the mandrel. It's long enough that I have some leverage to do that with until I get to the end. Then it's time to pull out my trusty mallet and start pounding that end down and over the mandrel. Don't forget that you're hammering on a conical shape, so you need to flip the direction that the ring is on. And while hammering, kind of hammer over to the side, like you're pushing the metal over and hammering. Once again, it's time to anneal because this gets work hardened so, so fast. I'm going to call this done because I'm over it. <laughs> Using bristle discs. Clean up any messes that are in there. 
I wanted to mention while I was doing this that if you are using the binding wire, you want to make sure that you don't put any flux on that binding wire because it's very easy to get your um, binding wire soldered to your piece. Just a thought. This looks pretty good actually. It doesn't really need much. I am going to take the extra fine silicone point and just go in here a little bit. Do this with the other ring too. This is a cleanup for both rings. Thought I'd save the exciting stuff finishing to the end. Time for my favorite, favorite part. <laughs> The end. <laughs> you don't, you'd think I didn't like to make jewelry. It's just so weird. I think it's because I've made so many of these rings. Where do you see how many? Um, <laughs> I get an idea in my head and I have to keep doing it and doing it, exploring it, exploring it, and beating it to death. So I have a lot of rings. Anyway, uh, I'm going to liver of sulfur both my two, two uh, strip wrap ring and the wrap ring we just did that uses the pattern wire and we're going to throw them in this extremely smelly concoction liver of sulfur you can use jack's black too um it's it's a it's a little more chemically chemicky chemic <laughs> never mind i'm not trying to any not going to talk anymore i'm done um so we don't want these to get <laughs> flaky black but we do want them to get completely covered with the solution okay that looks good so this kind of charcoaly black and I'm throwing it into a, a little thing bowl that has um, a little bit of baking soda in it there's actually something else that you can use that's supposedly better than baking soda but I can't remember what it is it's on my website somewhere <laughs> feeling kind of lazy all right so they're out so you got to neutralize them otherwise they continue to color which we don't want them to do and next we have to take off uh, the black from the patina in uh, the high spot so it has that contrast between light and dark I'm, I'm gonna wash these and then we're gonna do that Mostly I use three things to remove a uh, patina. I think number one is the quadruple aught steel wool. It's four zeros. Um, I use the silicone polishers and these little pads called pro polish pads are great for removing. This is cheaper and more of a workhorse. So I usually start with this. Oh, and I forgot I use the bristle brushes also. So you're just going to remove as much as makes you happy. <laughs> whatever that may be all or none you don't even have to pat patina them or patinate them and it just adds so much depth and dimension to it um, i pretty much always try to clean up most of the stuff inside the ring it's going to get worn away eventually from wear and i oftentimes switch to this this is a little finer you can point it you know, make little points like this and get into hard to reach places, which is nice too. So this ring, I the put to bed. <laughs> Crack myself up. You know I'm all alone in here, right? Talking to myself. I think that's why I make videos. So I have an excuse to talk to myself all day long. Anyway, I am going to go scrub this with a toothbrush and some Dawn dish detergent and make sure it's really clean. And I'm happy. You could say I went on a tear. I've hardly made any jewelry all year <laughs> and then seven rings in two days. So, oh, anyway, I, I love them all. I was ta thinking about giving some away and I'm like, well, maybe I should wear them for a while and see. <laughs> I know, Grady. Now, I think this is the ring that was the one piece and as you can see it was no longer I've got two four six ends on here uh, it was rolled out as one piece and I hated how it was bumping up in weird spots 
so I, I cut it uh, in two places and balled the ends up and that worked. So don't be afraid to get really aggressive with this stuff. Just tell it who's the boss. <laughs> Uh, so I'm, I'm just like, I've got all these new rings. I love that one. It's totally awesome. I think this is my first one. And weirdly, I'm going to insert the image right here. I've, I made that ring a couple days ago and I've lost it already. I have no idea where it is. That was the actual true first ring. So I can't wait for you to try it. This is a really fun when you aren't cursing. And here's the one we did today. Looks awesome. You know, I was thinking with these, they'd be great with a oval cab, cabochon on here or round one. So this was my first wrap one. And then this is my second, which I think looks gorgeous with the liver sulfur. Just really accentuates that pattern. Pretty awesome. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I had a really good time, obviously. <laughs> and uh, hope to see you all at the next video. Ciao.